What's up, everybody? It's me, it's Alexis Maurice, and your boy Trey Hollywood. And we are about to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. We're about to have a sit down because we just got through watching um, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Atlanta reunion. reunion. And honey, it, the shit was hilarious. It was too, too funny. Now, Trey hadn't been following the whole season. So, piece it piece might be a couple of times where I may have to stop and debrief him and, you know, get him up to speed on what's going on. Right. But it was so funny. So, go ahead and pour yourself a glass of wine, okay? Uh, put on some lipstick, ladies, guys, lip balm. If you want to put on some lipstick, how you doing? You can do that, too. Put up a chair because we about to, we about to start talking. So, the reunion kicked out with Jocelyn refusing to sit on the stage right. with everybody else. Right. Um, you know, the Puerto Rican princess is that bitch. And she can do exactly what she wanted. The show began with Jocelyn. And the show ended with Jocelyn as well, too, because she only well, wanted to sit. Really, not really, because she wasn't there. Well, but at the beginning of the it show. started with her bullshit, and ended with her bullshit. <laughs> and you still ain't see her ass. Whatever. The, the Puerto Rican princess can do no wrong in my eyes. Really? Okay? All these people, all season long. So Trump can't do no wrong. Kenya can't do no wrong. Jocelyn can't do no wrong. You damn right. Well, wait a minute. I didn't say Trump can do no wrong. Y'all heard him, right? that from? Hold up. Wait a minute. Right. But, you know, th this whole season, I'm going to just say this and then we're going to move on. This whole season, these bitches have been talking cash money shit about Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. They can't keep Jocelyn's name out their mouth mm -hmm. or whatever. Jocelyn ain't filled with none of these girls. With the exception of Lovely Mimi, mm -hmm. um, um, Jessica Dime, and Carly Red. But the whole cast talking about her. That's how you know you that bitch, Trey. I mean, that, that's, that's how you know you that bitch. Or whatever. I don't be knowing these hoes, and they still be talking about me. And Jocelyn came and making demands. I only want to sit on the couch with Jessica Dime and, and um, what's the other little girl the name? Stud. The stuff, Melissa. I only want to sit on the couch with them. If y'all can't give me what I want, then bitch. I'm out. So we'll find out what's going on later on um, right. with, with Jocelyn and everybody else. But we had a couple of no-shows to the reunion. Tammy and Waka Flocka. I don't even know why they ain't even show up. Well, Tammy um, on tour. She promoted her single. Whatever. She decided to join Waka Flocka on tour. I don't even know what that's about. That sounds like some bullshit if you ask me personally. But maybe she just didn't want to be a part but of I the mean. circus show. Now, I thought it was very interesting how, you know, Mona and the production team is basically setting Tommy. Mm. up to be the new Jocelyn because you know word on the street word on the highway word on the road all of that is that Jocelyn is not coming back next season the boulevard. so they setting you know Tommy to be the new Jocelyn or whatever Tommy to me got a little More. couple of screws Jocelyn on loose too. yeah but Tommy just like she morphs into like this monster or something like that when she's up there talking and the faces that she be making fix me fix me my like, girl I'm gonna need for you to take a pill or two I ain't trying to call you crazy but sometimes balance and they need a little lift. They need a little help trying it. to get things in order. I didn't like it because basically it was Tommy versus just about everybody on the whole, you well, know, on the whole couch. Versus everybody. Exactly. So they revisited the whole Jocelyn and Tommy from last season. Why these two are beefing. They got pending cases or whatever the case may be. Then, you know, they was trying to play on the thing that Stevie J and Tommy had something going on and she was talking about Stevie J and um, him pulling out the beefcake and the red seat Bentley and all kind of stuff like that. Like that to me, that's just kind of gut and trash. And the word on the street too is that Tommy won't be returning next season as well. She but we'll see up. that. We'll see later on. I think allegedly she's gonna be locked up. <laughs> <laughs> then you got lovely Mimi and Jessica Dime fighting each other. Now see, this is the part where I'm torn. I'm torn in two because. I like, like Jessica Dom. I love Jessica Dom. Jessica Dom, I, you know, I, and, I, you've and seen her growth. Why are you talking you've that? seen her growth, you know, through the seasons or whatever, and I'm happy for her. Yes. But I do like Lovely Mimi. I think she's good for the show or whatever because she's kind of like the first Asian of the whole franchise. Yeah, in a sense or whatever. So she's setting trends. She's a pioneer yeah, she's in the love and hip hop world. She's, she is very insane. Or whatever. But Jessica Dom, now I'm going to say this. Jessica Dom got Love and Mimi right together when her and Carla Red got up and started marching like they was on the marching band. Talking about Love and Mimi looked like a majorette. What do you think she looked like? <laughs> do you think she looked like a majorette? Do you know what a majorette is? Uh, oh, I ain't know. We know the band. No, I was for football. Oh, I, I, I remember. I remember seeing them. I didn't even know you played football or whatever. But you, know, you tried it. <laughs> you, you tried it. I never would have thunk it, Trey. That's why I hurt my knee. Anywho, I didn't know you had knee problems. Wait.
people would sit down and have a conversation <laughs> and learn more about each other. Because clearly, but she was like, "Bitch, yo, you're a majorette looking crazy." Look at me out because I can't stand Carly Ray. Why? Carly <laughs> Ray is so messy. She is the dumbest. She's needed. No, she's not. Oldest hoe <laughs> in reality TV no, history. I will say, Carly Ray, you're a little too old for some of the shenanigans that you be giving. Bitch, you show. jump on bandwagons <laughs> just to have friends. You try to jump on K Michelle. You try to jump on Jocelyn. You try to jump on Mimi. You try to jump on Rashida. Just the dime. Next season, if Lovely Meanie's still on the show, she's going to be on my Lovely Meanie bandwagon. Because I'm, Lovely Meanie has gained a, band, a, fa- a fan. She had a fan base even coming into the right. show. That's the thing, So, though. man, she's going to try to be on it. I can't stand Color Red. I just want her to stop being the host she is, jump from man to man, trying to be friends with each friend. That lady just gets on my last nerve. And I wish she would unblock me on Twitter so I can let her So know. you can attack her again? Yes. Why the hell would she do that? Ain't nobody finna see and let you attack them on social she media? She attacked me, so I attacked her You're back. You're a bully. No, she's a bully. What did she say to you? She a bully. What did she say to you? I was just talking about the show and about her stupidity a couple seasons ago. Exactly. And she tried to come for me in my... Block! My, she tried to come for me in my profile Emoji picture. Emoji block! And, <laughs> and her whack-ass story that she had over there in that ghetto mall... Whatever, leave her alone. She's a business she, owner. But, but business owner of what? But I, and I don't really even know why Carly Red and Lovely Mimi are even beefing with each other because, because she see the fake fraud bitch that she is, and Lovely Mimi keeps it real. And I believe that she does keep it real because I feel like you know what? She type of person. You know what? If I'm talking about you, bitch, I'm gonna let you know I'm talking about you. Right. If he's talking about you, mm-hmm. bitch, I'm gonna let him know he's talking about you. Y'all need to handle that shot, and that's what I but see. But you know, but not Carly. That's though. not Candy. You used to be on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Y'all used to no, love no, Candy because no. Candy was that this girl. This not about Candy. But but I'm just saying, do not that. all of a sudden you don't no. like Candy anymore, but she was that same time. I don't like Candy. Bitch she's not to learn like Candy since she we got retired. We ain't even finna go down. This is Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, so we ain't even finna go down exactly. that road. Right. So this is the biggest story of the season, Kirk and Rashida Frost. Um, so for those of you who don't know, basically you've been living up under a rock if you watch, you know, um, reality TV. What had happened was the season started with Kirk and Rashida appear, you know, everything appeared to be okay. Yeah, they come to find out that Kirk had been cutting out on Rashida with this girl named Jasmine who had a baby and she is saying that Kirk is the father of the baby. Mm-hmm. Now, not only did she say Kirk was the father of the baby, but Kirk was putting her up in the same apartment that her, him and Rashida was living in, you know, because they was house was still finishing, getting built and all that kind of stuff like that, plus it's downtown. So he was paying for her to live in that apartment because she was carrying his baby. Well, you know who found out? Carla Red. I thought about everything. And Carla Red did the right thing, what any friend would do. Get the additional information. Give me the juice. And then I'm going to go ahead and take it to my girlfriend and tell my girlfriend, this is what t- this is the T girl. Yeah. Come to find out your man, your husband, a cut out. He been paying for some other bitch apartment across town and as a bastard child mixed in the whole equation. So what, you, what did you think about that whole storyline, Trey? Um, I think that, and like I've always said, I mm-hmm. believe that Kurt is a dog. She should have, Rashida should have been left him when her mama ran over his motorcycle. <laughs> it should have just been done that time. Like, I feel like, yes, you know him. This is who, this is who you've been with for 17 years. Mm-hmm. But there comes a point in your life where you can step out and be free of the bullshit that Kurt is bringing into your life. And I don't think it's healthy. But just at the same time. And yes, this, this is when the cast broke. Like, everybody on stage was Brown, crying. Yeah, because, uh-huh. you know, she was saying that she's grown to be a woman with this man. Yeah. He's been her partner. And when you're in a marriage trait, it's supposed to be for the good, the bad, the ugly, through ups and downs, trials, not and tribulations. Not child with somebody else. You're not supposed to be doing Those that. things no. happen. Let me tell you, I hate cheaters. I can't stand a motherfucking cheater. I think cheater is the Glenn, bottom you've been cheated. of the scum of the earth. I think cheaters are less, l- lower than than thieves. Like people they're, they're, they're mistakes, low. Trade. No, no, no. You don't accidentally slide into no vagina. You don't actually <laughs> slide into no ass. <laughs> You, you, shoot it off. you don't. You don't do that. You don't do that. It's a setup. They're, they're, you set this shit up. You don't. You, it's not. It's not. It's not possible to be an accident. You don't accidentally have to cheat. You may accidentally kiss. You know what I'm saying? Might be drunk, inebriated. She might lean in. You might be emotional. Whatever the case may be. That's still cheating. But you don't accidentally pull your pants down. Take your underwear. Well, off. Like, you take yours off. 
and then we insert each. No, that's not. It's not possible. It's not accident. I don't give a no. Nobody ever said I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Well, I, I, I don't, don't care. think nobody was saying that it was necessarily an accident. But sometimes people are in situations that they have no business being in. And what they what, have what no business what, being what, in, but it happens. But what is what shit is so bad to you to make you want to go in and have sex with another woman? Well, he said that they haven't been. They haven't been screwing. They haven't been okay. having sex. That, that happened. And as a man, and as my, a man, in you the know that, 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 in relationship that you can be in, you not have sex. That when you step out, you step to the person you with and let them know how you feel. And that's y'all what y'all gotta fix. And y'all gotta fix it some way to fix it that way. And that's what lovely Mimi had said yes. on, on the show too. She was like, you know, if you're in a marriage, you know, y'all got to you got to come to me. me and let me know what I'm doing right. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Which is true. You got to give the person the opportunity to fix it. But just like the other girl, um, what's her name? Um, Sierra and Shooter. He was saying Shooter that he can't talk to his wife. Or whatever. So, but then that goes back to the communication piece that Rashida was talking about. But y'all, had, this is this was probably the rawest and realest moment that Love and Hip Hop has ever had because y'all know y'all good for some manufactured storylines now. Or whatever, call it spade a spade. But that moment on the stage when Rashida broke down and everybody else, you know, because they're they're the only couple that has lasted through all the seasons. Kirk didn't make things any better because he was lying, talking about he didn't know the girl. Then he said he didn't have sex with the girl. And when all the information came out on the table, he was still lying about it. And then Kirk still didn't want to get a DNA test. Now he says in the reunion he didn't want to get a DNA test because he didn't want the whole world to see what was going on because Kurt got mad on one episode. You are fucking with my family. This no. is my family. That's this is same. TV. This is my family. No. Don't fuck you up my fucked family. Up your family. You fucked up your family. You the one went and had sex with the other woman and put your whole family into the situation right. while you're recording a fucking reality TV show. So don't blame the network, don't blame the cameraman, don't blame nobody else but your fucking self. Just like Tony Braxton said, just be a fucking man about it. Stop the lying. You lie once, you gotta make up another lie to cover up the next lie. If you don't cheat, you ain't gotta do that shit. Just leave it the fuck alone. And that's what I think Rashida should do. Just leave it the fuck alone. I think she dumb to still sit there and sit this man we ain't even got no damn test done. You know, this this is a tough situation because even the other girl, Shooter and um, Sierra, you know, because Sierra had her her a girl working in her shop, right. Mar- the Mariah girl, mm-hmm. and you know she was her friend, putting her on, helping her out, and then come to find out. Her friend Sierra, her assistant, is sleeping with her husband. Not only sleeping with her husband, but blackmailing the husband as well on top of that. But she's finding it in her heart to forgive him, even though he got her looking like a complete jackass on national TV. But why can't you forgive him, but you can't forgive her? Your man that you committed, that you have got married to in front of God, in front right. of friends and family. That's that's the difference. You're sitting here. That's the difference. But that's the thing. That's a marriage vow. These That's just my girlfriend. And on top of that, my girlfriend has stabbed me in the back for a year. So why would I even try to me. invest in forgiving I'm a gonna relationship be, with her? I'm going to be more hurt with the fact that the person that I don't, that I don't share in Which front of my true. friends and family has stepped out with this, this side hoe. This somebody who worked for me. Yeah. Like, Really? So no, I, I I honestly wouldn't be able to for, 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 forgive, like especially not that quick or that easy. What she said, it's a I'm process. I'm gonna like seven years. Forgiveness to pass by. is a process. When this shit fall off your credit, <laughs> in seven years, yeah. that's that's gonna be me. The better like your credit, motherfucker. I need seven years. Well, all I know is that she's trying to forgive, you know, her husband and trying to move on. That was some foul shit. But Love Lamini spoke the truth. Communicate with your spouses. Let them know if they're doing something wrong. I don't even know why Sierra was fighting with Mimi behind stage. Mimi, girl, you was just fighting with every damn body on this set or whatever. But I don't even know I was fighting because you should be forever in debt to Love Lamini. Even though you and her had beef, you should be forever in debt her because she was the one that told you that your husband was cheating right. with your assistant slash friend. But Kurt... Get this DNA test. Now, the girl who Kurt, you know, had the baby with Jasmine, and there was another girl named Kiana. Apparently, they're in a relationship with this guy, and I can't think of what the guy's name is, but he's also Mimi's ex as well, too, from years ago. But they said that the three of them are scammers, that um, those girls do whatever that the guy tell them to do. On top of that, they said that um, Kiana also said that she had an affair with Kurt as well too. So Kurt was sleeping with these two girls who's in a relationship with this guy and they done had the baby and the guy also used to be Mimi's ex on top of that. 
a lot of scam artist shit. But Kurt did allude. He said, if the baby is his, there's nowhere in the world that he's leaving his baby with them three scams. That's, that's you know that sounds like a family tree to me. Okay, it's all, a mess. All of this, this is all of that. a mess. Yeah. But we'll find out more on the next episode, on the next um, part two of the reunion. We're going to see what the Puerto Rican princess got going on. Allegedly, we're going to see that she quit the show. What are you doing all that for? Because I just because can't. What? I just can't, can't with what? Just doing the most. D-T-M. Whatever. She doing can do the, the most. most. She's the Puerto Rican princess, Trey. She ain't K. Michelle. Whatever. Uh -huh. And so what? She's her own person. And I rest my case. Jocelyn to me is bigger than K Michelle and has the potential what? to be Jocelyn has the potential to be very a, a lot bigger than K Michelle. You can bring up K Michelle's you know, resume. You can bring K it up all you want to. Three albums. Whatever. Multiple reality, her own reality show. Good for her. Tours. Jocelyn has music. <laughs> Jocelyn has a reality show. She's on a reality not show. Okay, Michelle's level. What else? That's not. That's what else? not. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. I'm just give saying. Jocelyn some time. I'm gonna start. I'm you know I'm gonna start debate over. If Jocelyn can keep, oh, if Jocelyn can keep her Team nose Jocelyn clean, with Alexis if Maris, she can keep her nose clean Michelle, and work on Hollywood. you know how she reacts and she the way she does things, trust me. Jocelyn will surpass K. Michelle. Michelle. You watch what I tell you now. She we'll see y'all. We'll see y'all next Monday for part two of the Loving Hip Hop. She's been on Loving Hip Hop. Who? Jocelyn. She's been on all the seasons. Right, and she still has not surpassed K. Michelle. The bitch ain't even past Tamar Braxton. But the I thing rest about my it, case. The thing about it is, we love you guys. Thank you so Jocelyn much for watching. Jocelyn had a, a, a speech problem that she's been working through throughout the years. A speech problem or whatever. I'm just saying, okay, keep underestimating uh, the underdog. She does have a slight speech issue because she speaks hey, Spanish. Sophia Vergara had a speech problem, but she still had multiple movies that she's been in. Bye, y'all. We'll see y'all next Monday. Because Trey on some bullshit. No, you on some bullshit. I said it. And what you said right was some said. bullshit.